Now that you see we finished up our driver side wheel tub install and I went ahead and moved to the passenger side and repeated the process, but we haven't put the tub in yet to allow for the installation of our cross member. Yes. Okay, now we want to locate the instructions for the quadrant link. We'll start off with going to page four and it's going to give us some measurements to locate the shock cross member. Right here it says 69 Camaro and Firebird, 36 and a quarter. So we are working on a 69, so our measurement will be 36 and a quarter. That 36 and a quarter is going to be measured from, there's a bend radius inside of the trunk where it meets the tail panel. We're going to measure from there forward of the car. As you can see, we've already laid out the cut lines. What I'm going to do is walk you through how to lay out the cut lines for the cross member. So we'll go 36 and a quarter forward in the rear of our tail light panel. And what I've done is went with several small marks across the top edge and then I used a smaller straight edge and just connected the marks across. All right, now that we've established our 36 and a quarter cut line, we're going to measure six inches back to the rear of the car for our second cut line and the six inches is only on top of the frame rails for both sides all right then in the center being that this is a different angle and it's going to measure longer we're going to go six and five eighths and we'll do the same thing where we measure a couple spots across the floor pan and it will connect all our small scribes to a continuous line Okay, while we're cutting this out, I want to pay close attention to the top of our frame rail. You don't want to cut the sheet metal away from the top of the frame rail. We're going to go from the bend across for both sides. Okay, now that we have our four pin cut away for the shock cross member, we're going to take and fit our shock cross member in the car. It may be necessary to trim the car and the cross member to get a proper fit. Okay, now we're going to test fit our shock cross member and mark the areas that will need to be trimmed. All right, I went ahead and deburred the edges we cut earlier, so that will help us get our cross member in and not get cut. So we're going to go ahead and set this in place. All right, as you can see, I've already trimmed some of our cross member just so we can get it in and test fit it and mark other areas that'll need to be trimmed. But uh, we always leave these a little long for the variances in every car. All right, we're gonna mark this side to be trimmed. So we'll take a uh, straight edge and we'll go up off the side of our frame rail and uh, mark that. And we'll do the same in the front and then we'll just connect the line across the top. Okay, for this next step, we wanna ensure the cross member is pulled all the way down on top of our frame rails on both sides. Okay, then we're gonna take a mark all the way across the front edge of the cross member where it meets the floor pan this area is going to be trimmed off so, and then welded so you don't need this excess underneath the car.
All right, before we weld the cross member in, we want to make sure that it's level from side to side and level from front to back. All right, we're at 0.1 degree. That's uh, pretty close. Good. Really good. And here's the front to back too. So. Okay, before we weld our cross member in, we're going to go around the perimeter of it and tack it every half inch. That'll ensure that it stays put and it'll keep our sheet metal from wanting to warp as bad. Okay, now that we have our shock cross member installed, the next step is to install our track bore locator. Okay, we wanna make sure that these two surfaces are flush to the inside of our frame rail. So we're gonna trim these areas right here to fit up inside the shock cross member and that will give us some adjustment for leveling it and squaring it. Okay, as you can see, this surface is far away from our frame rail. So we'll need to trim these areas like I talked before and uh, we'll get that up against the frame rail. So. All right, we trimmed our track bar mount, so we have room for adjustment and it'll fit into the shock cross member. We want to make sure this surface and this surface is 90 degrees with the car. All right, we finished up our track bar locator mount. We want to move over to the driver's side of the car and close out the area from the shock cross member to the frame rail. So I just took a piece of uh, flat plate, eighth inch thick flat plate, and cut it to the shape and welded it in. And then once we've got this done, like you see, I'll come in and we'll metal finish, grind the weld, make sure everything's good and flush, all the sharp edges are gone, and uh, have a good Clean finish. Okay, now that we have both of our deep tubs installed and our shock cross member, the next step is going to be install our truck hinge reinforcements, and uh, we'll walk through that. Okay, with the reinforcement in place on our deep tub, you can see our flanges are not contacting. So we're gonna modify these flanges until we get a flush fit around the surface and uh, be ready to weld in. Okay, now that we got our flanges fit to the top of our deep tub, we're gonna trim the top of this flange off so uh, it meets flat too. So, watch right here, and we know it holds here. Okay, now that we have our reinforcement modified, we're gonna weld it in place and then we'll repeat the same steps for the other side. Now that we have both of our reinforcements welded in place, we can remove the braces we installed earlier. Then we'll grind the welds. Okay, next we're going to weld in 
our package tray reinforcements. Just locate where the spot welds were previous and uh, we'll weld them in. Okay, next we're going to locate our package tray to tub closeouts. They're supplied in the kit. All right, we're going to lay it up there. We're probably going to go about one inch up and uh, bend this flange out and then put rosettes around the perimeter. We've got our flange bent up and our rosette holes in place. So we're going to slip back in there and uh, check our fitment before we weld. Now these pieces are cut to fit, so they're a little large around the edges, so it may be necessary to trim to uh, fit your car. All right, we've already got this one installed and we're gonna repeat the process for the other side. Then after we're done, we'll grind all the welds. Next, we're gonna locate our cut template for our upper quadrilink mounts. So, I'm gonna cut this out and uh, I'll show you how to lay it in the floor pan. All right, before we place this in the floor, there's a circle that we have to punch out. It's for the seat belt bolt mount. All right, we'll punch it out and use a bolt to line the template with that. Just lay it in place. You'll notice there's a bead on the side of the floor pan. What we'll do is just hold this template and we'll keep it parallel with that and also parallel with this bend line in the floor. So just use some tape to hold it in place before we scrub it. We have this scribe and laid out. We'll take the template, turn it over, and do the same process for the other side. Now that we have our cut lines established, we're gonna cut it out and fit our link pockets. Alright, now that we've located our upper link pocket for the driver's side, we're going to put the rosette holes in it and get pulled in and weld it up. Okay, what I like to do is locate the rosette holes to be welded on top of the frame rail flange. You can see the spot welds at the top for the frame rail, so that way we'll get tied in. Okay, now you see we've got our rosette holes drilled in our upper link pocket and also punched holes in our floor pan well from the bottom side to this flange. So we'll use our factory seatbelt hole to locate and hold this in place while we weld it. Make sure it's centered in the hole. Slug it in. Okay, now we have it cinched out in place and you'll see the bottom edge and flush to the floor. It may be necessary to take and use a bolt and a nut all the way through to the frame row flange 
or you can use like I have here self tapping uh, sheet metal screws and uh, it'll cinch it down you can see we've pulled the front edge of the link pocket down to the floor pan with our sheet metal screw and uh, there's a couple other areas that we'll have probably do the same thing to uh, these cars every one of them vary so some floor pans it fits better than the others so it's just a production car Now that we've got the top side welded in, we'll move to the bottom side and uh, we'll get it welded in also. And uh, when we're done, we'll move to the other side and repeat the process. Okay, we've got the whole top side welded in. And uh, as you can see, we've rosette welded it. And around the perimeter, I've welded it also. But before I welded the perimeter, I went in and trimmed the edge of the frame rail and the floor pan to make sure when we weld it and uh, grind the welds, we won't have any interference putting our upper link in. Whoops. 